Edward has written in and says, Hello, Dutch and James. Hope all is well with the both and love your show. Thank you. My question for Dutch is back when he had the run as manager of Jack Swagger. A lot of us remember the run-in they had with Glenn Beck. I remember seeing the promo where you guys cut a bit in character and then introduce yourselves <laughs> as the real as the real people like Jake uh, Hager and Wayne Cowan and explained that it's all a show and acting. It's not every day you see performers having to break character to defend themselves or the company. I was curious, who was it in the company that this is something uh, that needed to be done? Done. Did it come from Vince himself, and was the whole controversy squashed immediately after the promo? Thanks for answering. Well, I, I don't know whose idea it was, but Glenn Beck, just to just to show you that you can make wrestling fans out of almost anybody if you come out there with a legitimate uh, character and personality, and and they said we were making fun of the. Uh, the tea party, I guess, but we weren't. But I think a lot of people were feeling this at the time that we were out defending America and people were trying to tear it down and we were real Americans and we didn't like foreigners. We didn't like this. And But when Glenn Beck, we challenged him to come on the show, WWE flipped their lid over that. Oh, Glenn Beck is going to come on? Oh, and they would have figured out something. I'd have probably end up damn Glenn Beck beating the crap out of me. But of course he refused to come on. But we just we took him on there and put the blue screen behind us and said, Glenn, this is what we do. <laughs> My name is not Zeb Coulter. I'm Wayne Cowan from wherever South South Carolina. And this is an apartment uh, in Kentucky, Dutch. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what he said. But and we kind of went out and trolled him back, and we never heard any more from him. But they got a lot, a lot of uh, press off that, and that's what they wanted to get. Because, <clears throat> see, the first night I went out there, I was in, I was in Nashville, because they call, called me and they had this idea they wanted to do with Swagger, to make him the real American and somebody that could talk. And they had tried Jimmy Golden, <clears throat> who was who actually portrayed uh, Jack's father. And they they tried. I think they were thinking about trying to uh, do Robert Robert Fuller, but they thought that he was too much of the too much of a showman. And so they got down to me, and I showed up in a, I showed up in Nashville around four o'clock. Went in there and talked to them. They wanted me to do one interview to show to show Vince. Then they give me the the interview, and I went in there and and I showed up at four thirty. Did the interview at five thirty. Vince saw the tape at six thirty, and I got hired at six forty five. That's the quickest hire I think in WWE history. And I remember at the end. Somebody told me to say what well, is in a say we the people. And I said we the people. And that's what popped him, I think. But then he he hired me on the spot. And I went out there and got in the ring that night. And it was weird because the people knew me there as Dutch Mantel. And I said, now he's doing, but they kind of got it at the end. And then when I finally told the people from that point on, uh, please. I want every real American in the sound of my voice to please rise, put your hand over your heart, and in a loud, clear voice, say along with me, we, the people. Everybody did it. And they told me, oh, you're going to have so much heat. But I didn't have heat. Actually, I was a half baby face. People were supporting me, and they didn't know what to do with it. And I give them a few ideas. Of course, they overlooked that. So... But anyway, that's that's how it came about, and I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of happy about my run as Zeb Coulter. Uh, Jack was doing nothing at the time. I remember I told Jack one time I said, "When you get a ring, start screwing around with those people a bit." He said, "Oh, they told me not to do it." I said, "I don't give a shit what they told you. Do it." So he did it. The people started responding. Now he's getting immediate feedback from it, and then. He went on. See, what? they would tell Jack stuff, and they never would say nothing to me. 
they, they never would try to critique me or anything because I knew more than they knew and they didn't want to come in there. And I got, I did get in a, a, a discussion went out with one of the writers saying I was going to say this about the, the constitution and this, that, and the other. I said, Zeb Coulter wouldn't say this. They said, Oh, Vince wants you to say it. I said, I don't think Vince wants me to say this. I really don't. They said, well, you want to go see him? I said, yeah, let's go see him. And he come back and said, oh, no, Vince is busy right now. Okay, what do you want to say? And then he changed it. Hmm. So he wanted me to say something that was almost, I mean, if I, if I was a real American, I would know the Constitution, even though I was a heel. So, and that writer, I think he, he, he got let go about, I don't know, a month or two after that. It's funny, I never considered that you'd actually been, de- you actually made your debut as Zeb Coulter in Nashville. I of did. all places where they would know you more than anyone as, as Dutch Mantel, pretty much, apart from Memphis, I guess. Or and then they call me, and they call me the next day. They had Memphis the next day. Uh, can you make Memphis? I said, well, it's about 10 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock. I said, I can. But he said, we can't get you a ticket. You'll have to drive. I said, okay. So I drove down and made Memphis the next day. Same stuff. And that's how it took off. Just, then they hired me full time. And then they, they called me in there and I worked out my contract, my money and everything. And a little bit of a, a room in the back of uh, uh, the National Civic Center or whatever, Bridgestone Arena. One more thing about the uh, Glenn Beck thing is – do you remember any particular reaction? Because I remember it was a fairly big deal, at least on the internet and the reporting and everything, when you did essentially what was that kayfabe-breaking segment. But what was the reaction to it internally? Did some people think it was a great idea or a bad idea? Because it really was fourth wall breaking, even you know, even in that era. I never heard anybody say anything about it. I thought, you know, it it was punching through the fourth wall. But, see, back in those days, the guys didn't say shit, excuse my language, (laughs) because it wasn't their job to say anything. So if they said something, you know, they may have thought it was getting a little bit out of line and they were above their pay grade in saying that. And I went, I just went in there and did what they told me to do. I didn't think it was for... See, I could always say, oh, I just made that crap up, I guess. I don't know. I just, I just did, I did what they told me to do. 